Hi guys, Yasas Ke Kalas Tirtate to another episode of Dimitra's Dishes. Today we're making spanakopita with a homemade filo dough. This is known as a choriatico dough in Greece. It's basically like a village style, very hearty and rustic pastry dough that is so easy to make. I think it has like four or five very basic ingredients and it tastes so delicious. Everyone who's had it while I was recipe testing this past week said that this was the best spanakopita they've ever had. It's delicious, I think you guys are gonna love it. Let's get started. We're gonna get started with making the dough and you can do this a day ahead of time and just let it rest in the refrigerator. You're gonna have to let it rest on the counter for about an hour or two so it can be nice and elastic and soft. So the ingredients are super simple. It's 500 grams of all-purpose flour. Now 500 grams is about three and a half cups or so, three to four cups, it's about that much. A heaping teaspoon of salt. Just mix everything all up and it's gonna go in the mixing bowl. Everything goes in the mixing bowl together. Now you don't need a mixing bowl for this. You can definitely knead this by hand. I like to use one because it makes life super simple. We're gonna add a cup or I think it's 250 mLs of warm water. You wanna make sure the water is warm, not cold. A teaspoon of vinegar helps keep it really nice and tender. And two tablespoons of really good quality olive oil. That's it, we're just gonna knead this until the dough comes together and it's nice and elastic, smooth and soft. It's just gonna take a few minutes, you don't have to knead this for that long. If you see that it's kind of dry and crumbly, you can go in and add about a tablespoon of water at a time, just until it comes together, you don't want it to be sticky. So I said not to make it sticky and then what did I do? I went ahead and I made it sticky, but I'm gonna show you it because you can still fix it. I've two, two tablespoons of water would have been enough, but I went ahead and added a few more and then it did get a little bit too sticky, but you can just roll it out lightly and knead it on um, a work surface with just a little bit of flour and that fixes the problem. You could roll it into a log, perfect, no big deal. Cut it in half and then you need eight portions. as equal as possible. And then you're just gonna roll each one into a ball. You could do it on the counter, but if the counter has a lot of flour on it, it just, it'll be hard to roll. <laughs> you can see how these are not very equal. <laughs> it'll still be fine. Each one of these are gonna get rolled out into a layer of phyllo and it doesn't matter if one is a little slightly bigger than the other. We are not selling these. <laughs> we are not making, you know, opening up a phyllo factory, so that it will be fine. And you can just let these rest on your countertop just like this, covered with a towel or with plastic wrap. I'm just gonna need this area to make the filling, so I'm gonna store them or let them rest in this bowl over here. Just sprinkle a little bit of flour inside of it and go ahead and put all of the dough in there. And I'm just gonna cover it with some plastic wrap and set it aside for at least 30, 40 minutes. The longer you leave it, the, the easier they are gonna be to roll out. So one to two hours is preferable. You could also leave this in your refrigerator overnight and just work with it the next day. I'm gonna clean up and then we're gonna make the spinach pie filling. Okay, so the spanakopita filling is the same one that I've been using for the past like 15 years. It's delicious, you don't have to pre-cook the spinach or any of the herbs. It tastes so fresh and good and so easy to make. And I found that if you have a KitchenAid mixer, it'll do all the work for you. Otherwise, just finely chop the spinach and mix everything in a big bowl until it all comes together. I don't even chop my spinach anymore. That's how easy this version is. So I'm gonna put um, a little bit of the spinach in, not all of it, maybe that much. <laughs> Some of the dill, I'm using dry dill. If you're using fresh dill, you're gonna need about a bunch of it. That's like about a quarter cup of finely chopped dill. Otherwise, the measurement is, I believe, two or three tablespoons. The exact measurements are on the recipe on the blog post. I'm gonna add the scallions. I, I just roughly chopped six scallions 
And then I just um, dunk them in a bowl of cold water. So if there's any dirt inside of them, it'll sink down to the bottom. Lift them out, put them in a strainer, get rid of that excess water, and then you can then they're nice and clean. If the water is extra, you know, dirty, or if you see a lot of sediment down at the bottom of the water, give it a few rinses, but never pour the water with the scallions through the strainer. Otherwise, everything that comes out that's stuck inside of them, all that dirt is just gonna end up right back on them, right? Okay, then I have, this is a container or 15 ounces of full fat whole milk ricotta cheese. If you can't find it, you can just leave it out and put extra feta cheese in there. You can use an equal amount of cream cheese or even mascarpone cheese. I've, used, I've done this with all of those um, substitutes and it comes out delicious each and every time. But the ricotta is what my mom uses, that this is how she taught me, so I use this as often as I can get ricotta cheese. And then I'm going to add some freshly cracked black pepper, about half a teaspoon or so, or as much as you like. Just a little bit of salt, about half a teaspoon. Feta cheese tends to be pretty salty, and we are going to add that in later on, so you don't want this to get too salty. And then three eggs. If I'm in a real big hurry, I, ended up cra I end up cracking them into the bowl, and I always regret it because sometimes you get a shell in there and then you can't even fish it out. So just use the ricotta container or something that's already dirty so you don't dirty one more thing and put them in the mixer. I'm gonna start mixing this on medium low speed. And then as it's mixing, I'm just gonna keep adding the spinach in a little bit at a time until it's all incorporated in there. It's gonna break down and everything is gonna fit in the mixer. And then the final ingredient, once everything is mixed in, you see how everything fits, you're gonna need a pound of feta cheese. Always buy it in block form and just crumble it in yourself. If you buy the crumbles, I feel like I've said this so many times, they're too salty, not good quality, you just don't want them. Get a block of feta cheese and crumble it. It just takes a few seconds. And you don't wanna add this at the beginning because then it pretty much melts into everything and you're not gonna get little pieces of feta in each bite, which Tastes so good in spanakopita. And just mix it until it all comes together. Just give it a nice mix with a spatula so if there's anything stuck to the bottom, it's just all well incorporated. So I'm just gonna tidy up a little bit and then we're gonna put the spinach pie together. Okay, so I realized that I forgot to add the olive oil to the filling. I'm gonna add two, three tablespoons is really all you need. I always eyeball it and then just mix it all up. So I'm using this big pan because I, it's very traditional to use big round pans to make spinach pies. I found it in a local uh, Mediterranean specialty food store. Let's see how big it is. It's 13 inches or 33 centimeters. If you don't have one, I know these are hard to find. You don't have to use one of these. It's, it's not you know, mandatory. You can use a 10 inch round deep dish pie pan. This works. It's gonna be a more, um, a thicker pie. And who doesn't like thicker pies? That's delicious. Or you could use a nine by 13 inch baking dish. Either of these you can use. Okay, so I just moved the cutting board out of the way because I like to have a big surface to roll these out on. So the dough has rested for a few hours. I made this one in the morning and it's nice and soft and it's gonna, it should roll out very easily. I'm just gonna take one at a time and I'm just gonna press it all around so I can get it as round as possible. And I'm gonna lightly flour the area, lightly flour the dough. And to get it as round as possible, just each time you roll, just keep turning it. And you're gonna roll this out as big as you can without it tearing. It might get one or two tears in it, um, it shouldn't, but if it does, it's not a big deal. I'm thinking about 13 to 14 inches round is what you're looking for. The thinner it gets, the lighter the crust will be. If you like a thicker crust, I guess roll it out to about 10 to 12 inches round. That should be good, but it should be bigger than the pan that you're using so it can extend a little bit out. And if it starts to stick, just sprinkle some more flour and do that on both sides. Just try not to use too much flour. And then you can start rolling it on the rolling pin and just pressing it while you're rolling. It's gonna help it stretch out a little bit bigger. Let's see where we're at. We're at 13 inches and this is looking good enough to me for this one. You see it's a little bit see-through. 
It hasn't torn. It's a little tiny tear over here, but that is fine. The dough should be nice and elastic. So we're going to take the first layer and we're going to put most of it inside the pan and I'm going to let a little bit hang outside of the edges. This is going to help make a really nice crust. So I'm going to drizzle some olive oil on top and brush it. Now, if you want to use melted butter, if you like the flavor of butter better, you can do that. But this is traditional. This is how it's made in Greece. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue rolling out all of these layers. I'm going to layer first four layers of phyllo on the bottom, and then we're going to move on to the next step. But I think I'm just going to roll the, all of these out first so that way they're ready, and then we're going to put it all together. All right, so now that the sheets are formed, we're going to continue to just put this all together, and I'm just going to layer the sheets all around the pan with some of the phyllo just extending outside of the pan, drizzling some olive oil right on top. And then we're going to add all of the filling right into the pan over the phyllo. Smells so fresh and so good. And just go ahead and spread it out into an even layer. This smells like my childhood. Okay, then we're just going to fold over all of the pieces of phyllo that are, ex are extended outside of the pan, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to drizzle olive oil right over each one of the layers. And then the remaining four layers are going to get layered over top. If you want to, you can ruffle them on top the way I do my um, ruffled phyllo top with the store-bought phyllo. But I'm just going to do layers like this. So if you're going to ruffle them, this is what you're going to do. You're just going to take a sheet at a time and you're just going to gather it like that and then just place it on top. But I like it better this way. And now we're just going to cut it into portions. You can do the portions as big or as small as you want them. I like to do some diagonals, so let's go this way. And I have black sesame seeds. If you want to sprinkle white sesame seeds on top, you could, or you could leave it without any sesame seeds at all. I think they just add a little nice, pretty touch. So I'm just going to add them. Okay, so my oven is preheated to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. This is going to go in and bake on the center rack for 40 minutes. Then I'm going to raise the temperature to 400 degrees Fahrenheit and let this bake for another 20 or 25 minutes or until it's nice and golden on top. I start with a lower temperature because I want it to cook through nice and evenly. Each one of those layers, I want them to get perfectly cooked and the top ones and the bottom, I want them to be nice and crispy. So keep an eye on it because every oven bakes differently. I'll show you what it looks like as soon as it's done. The spanakopita is finally ready and the house smells incredibly delicious, makes, making me so hungry. Once it comes out of the oven, let it cool for at least 15, 20 minutes so that way it is easy to slice and it, does, it won't fall apart. I should have waited a little bit longer, but I had to wrap up this video. Let me tell you that this did take a little bit over an hour. It took about an hour and 20 minutes because the spinach did release a lot of juices. And as a matter of fact, if you want to lay a layer of breadcrumbs on the bottom of the pan, just so that way the bottom can be a little bit crispier, that might be a good idea. Some people don't like the texture of the breadcrumbs, so in that case, what I would do is uh, for the last about 10 minutes, I would move the pie to the bottom of the oven and turn the bottom heat on if, you're, if your oven is able to do that. If your oven bakes from the bottom like mine does, then the bottom rack will be fine. Just don't start it off on the bottom because it'll burn. So for the final 10 minutes, that should give it enough time to crisp up. This is just going to be a juicy pie because the spinach and the herbs are not cooked ahead of time and we love it that way. It's just so fresh and good. It is time to take a bite. Once it cools though, just make sure that you cut through it again. 
you know, where you scored it ahead of time. The top should be super crispy. The bottom might not be that crispy. Again, like I said, once it cools, um, the juices are going to be absorbed and you could actually put it in the oven for another 10 minutes if you want the bottom crust to be just as crispy as the top. That is an option. It is time for the taste test. Mm. One of my favorite things, this is how my mom always made it. She always made her own phyllo dough and she still does most of the time. It's rustic and a little thicker than the regular phyllo that's sold in the grocery store. I think it tastes better, it's heartier. That filling is the best. I think you'll agree with me if you give it a try and you compare it to fillings that are made with spinach that has been already cooked. The exact measurements are on the website. If you wanna learn how to make the spinach pie that's made with the store-bought phyllo, you're gonna click over here and I'll see you right over there. Yes, sir.